sort of weird bits of arpeggiation. I mean, if Hitchcock had been making movies in the early 18th century, you know, Bach would have been working full time on the Universal lot writing background scores for sure. <laughs> I mean, you see images of Peter Lorre or Vincent Price sitting at seven manual organs in haunted castles as, as the clock strikes midnight. Well, what, what strikes me there is that it sounds like a piece of auditory music. Oh, absolutely, because, you know, all he wrote in respect to what I just played is exactly like a jazz chart. What he wrote was... All the rest well, was me, you know? Well, Glenn, you can't leave us. Uh, here at midpoint. Uh, and why not? That's what the mini seven chord do. They lead you at midpoint. You've heard one, you've heard them all. There's just more to come. Well, nevertheless, I think you should play it to the end now. Well, okay, but I, I promise you, this is going to be my absolutely last performance, okay? I, now, the story thus far, when we left off, as I recall, was... You know something? That's Bach for people who do not like Bach. All right. Well, I can, I can sense the the uh, you know the reason behind some of your reservations concerning the chromatic fantasia. What mm -hmm. I don't understand though is that why you would bracket you know this very loosely rhapsodic piece mm -hmm. with a work like the Italian Concerto, which has that very rectangular kind of rococo architecture. Well, I. 
That's true. I think that both pieces, though, one could say, stand somewhat outside Bach's natural idiom, if one could call it that. I mean, neither are really contrapuntal, neither really get their ideas out of linear, you know, stimuli, mm -hmm. one kind or another. The Italian concerto, as you say, is a well-designed, neatly blocked out bit of Georgian architecture of the kind that Handel certainly wrote all the time in, in England, particularly, and uh, wrote, I think, rather more successfully, I must say. That's the kind of piece that Bach's sons would have probably liked the old man to have written all his life, but thank God he resisted the temptation most of the time anyway. And th they would have liked him to do that, I suppose, because as it happens, the Italian concerto is one of those very few pieces, really, where he quite clearly indicates certain parameters that normally he leaves up for grabs, you know. Uh, dynamics and... Dynamics and tempo, uh, but in this case, dynamics, because he indicates very clearly tutti, solo, forte, piano, contrast. And then you come up against a real quandary in this piece, because when you play it on the piano... The piano natively can do things that the harpsichord cannot. It can make crescendos and it can make diminuendos, and the harpsichord, of course, cannot. It has to put out plateaus when you play it on the harpsichord. So you have to then decide, okay, how much of the piano do we want in this? How much do we want to exploit and really use? And the question is not too much, because if you use too much, you then destroy the whole structure of the piece. I don't think, for example, it would be a good idea to minimize the, the tutti and the solo contrast by doing something like this. But 